Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Thank you for joining us for yet another Facebook live sessions with the scholars of South Ilahi. Tonight, um, we are very happy to continue the series with uh, Imam Abdullah Yandau. Uh, but tonight's surah, it will be Surah Al-Waqiyah. So it will be the, the Tafsir Surah of Surah Al-Waqiyah from the Tafsir of Sheikh Ibrahim Yas, And the class is conducted by Imam Abdullah Yandau. At the age of 14, Imam Abdullah Yandau completed the memorization of the Quran in Kaulak, Senegal. And he spent three years studying at the Islamic Institute of Sheikh Ibrahim Yas. Uh, he furthered his studies in Kuwait, obtaining an undergraduate degree in physical therapy from Kuwait University. And he has a doctorate of physical therapy. He is a certified orthopedic manual physical therapist and is also the director of Ypsilanti Rehabilitation Services in Michigan, USA, where he lives with his family. He is heavily involved in community service, volunteering actively with Hope Clinic in Michigan and serving as the imam of the Tijani community in Michigan since the year 2007. He has also established week weekend Quran schools for children and adults as well as the Friday Sufi Halakas and uh, yeah, without further ado, we'd like to invite Imam Abdullah Indal to begin his class. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Walabdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala ashraf al-mursaleen, Sayyidin al-Anbiyahi wa Imam al-Mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Fatiha lima ugliqa wa al-khatim lima sabaq. Nasir al-haqq bil-haqq wal-hadi ila suratika al-mustaqim. وعلى آله حق قدره والمقدار العظيم ورضي الله عن أصحاب الشيخ حيثما خلتوا يا أهم الرشاح لنا في هذا المحور وتعتفي لنا بالنذر تأتي لنا بذفر أما بعد All praises are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the beneficent and the most merciful Lord of this world and the hereafter the only one that we ask that he is the only one that we worship and the one where we ask that he assist us in worshiping him the right way. The one that we ask that he guide us on the path of those whom he is pleased with, not that of those whom he is displeased with. I mean. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, elders and young. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us the month of Ramadan and the six days of Shawwal. We first have to thank the brothers in Sautul Ilahi, the founder of which is Brother Khalid and his wife, Sister Ainun, and all of those who volunteer in making these halakat possible for us to read and share from what the scholars are sure may like increase their light and elevate them in Jannah have left to us with. We have been studying from the book of Sheikh Ibrahim, Ibrahim Abdullahi al kawlahi al Tijani, his tafsir of Al Quran, Riyadu Tafsir, or Riyadu Tafsir, is a book, a six volume book that he has. Uh, made the Tafsir al Quran. As we know, Shaykh Ibrahim has made Tafsir al Quran so many times. This was not something that he sat down and wrote, but just as he would sit and give the Tafsir, and people were recording it. In the recent years, one of the disciples decided to go collect the recordings that are available of this Tafsir. And after he collected all of the recordings that are available of Shaykh Ibrahim's tafsir, he did what is called tafriyab nasri, or transcribe it. And have taken it to the children of Shaykh Ibrahim and the scholars to approve it. Looking up the hadith that was mentioned by Shaykh Ibrahim and footnote them in the book. So that's how this book has come to be. In this, in this surah, Shaykh Ibrahim, he gives us the tafsir of Surah Al-Waqi'ah. In the beginning, he tells us it is a surah Makkiyah. This surah was revealed in Mecca, except a couple of ayahs. 
فبهذا الحديث أنتم مدينون وتجعلون رزقكم ذات آية إذ مدني ثلة من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين second one came in it is مدني so then the rest of it were revealed in Medina so Makki the surah that was revealed in Mecca and مدني what it was revealed in Medina so as we understand the Quran is not all of it was revealed at once they were revealed at different occasions so that's why you will find part of the surah could be revealed in Mecca and then the other part was revealed in Medina. Or you will find an entire surah revealed in Mecca and part of that surah revealed in Medina according to circumstances or conditions or the requirements as Allah chose it to be. So in the surah, most all of it or most of it uh, was revealed in Mecca except these couple of ayahs that Shaykh Ibrahim cited. It is a uh, 76 ayah, oh, 76 or oh, 77 ayahs. Seven, seven, 97 or 96 ayahs of the surah, the al-waqia. So some of surah al waqia some would say 99 ayahs, sorry, 99 ayahs or 98 ayahs, depending on the either wash or hafs. In, in al hafs, it is 96, 98 ayahs. In al wash, it is 99 ayahs. And there is the separation in, in these ayahs and the difference in, in the qiraat. He started the surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ida waqa'atil waqi'ah. So Ibrahim started saying, Ida waqa'atil waqi'ah, Ida qamatil qiyama, when the day of judgment comes. When the it, when it happens, the happening happens. When the happening happens, which is the day of judgment, Yom Al Qiyama. He said, if you want, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you want to see Yom Al Qiyama here in this dunya to see what it looks like, read Surah Al Waqiah. Yes, read Surah Al Waqiah because Surah Al Waqiah describes everything that will happen on the day of judgment as if you were seeing it with your own eyes so if one reads surah al-waqiyah and pays attention to all of the description that allah gives to surah al-waqiyah it gives you the sight it gives you a vision or a look or a peep into what happens on the day of judgment allah comes in to start and say is our part in waqiyah when the happening happens or the event happens, no one denies it. On that day when we stood over there in front of Allah, no denial would happen. No one could deny that this is the day of reckoning. This is the day of Al Hisab. This is the day of reward. No one would deny it. The denial only can happen while we're here, when we have doubts that it will it will it happen or will it not happen. That happening, there will be no denial of it, and the denial only happens in this world. It will elevate and lower. It will honor or disgrace groups of people. Those who are khafida, those who are disgraced, those who are thrown down are those of the hellfire. Khafidatun. They were lowered, they were disgraced, and they were thrown into hellfire. Rafiatun and those who are honored by elevating them and into them into Jannah. When the earth is shaken, remember back in Surah Al Yasin, one of the Kafisur. When the, bo when the boost, when the horn is being blown into, and then everything would come. Here is the horn is blown into, and the earth is shaken. The earth is shaken, a big shaken. When the earth is shaken, Raja. That means it's describing the heaviness or the strength of this shake. When the earth is shaken, and a big shake. 
and then that's when we say Wajumiyat al An Wajumiyat, that everybody would be gathered. Is that we get in Adraja, we bethat al Jibalu betha. Then the mountains will be pulverized, turned into dust. Footed as we have described, it is turned pulverized. Fakanat haba and and it becomes gubar, becomes like a dust. Mantu dust. Manbutha, munbatha, dust that is just spread out, muntashira. So it becomes dust, the mountains are pulverized and thrown into the earth as if it's to flatten the earth. So no one would say, oh, I was blocked by this mountain, as if you were visualizing it that way. When the, everybody would come out and stood out, there are mountains around, then an excuse would be not to be, or a chance of anyone to hide behind the mountains. Allah is denying you and I that chance of hiding behind the mountains to tell us that the mountains will be pulverized and turned into dust and spread across. Now, Wakuntum, you the human beings, you the creation of Allah, ins and jinn, you would turn, you come in Kuntum Azwaja, you came into groups. You will be divided into groups. Wakuntum Azwaja, Thulatun. You become now divided into two groups. So on the day of judgment, when the, everybody comes in to meet Allah, we will turn into three groups. Ashabul Yameen, Ashabul Maymana, those are the people of right hand. Those are the people of Jannah. Mashabul Maymana. With the glory and honor that Allah gave them. He tells you, Washabul Maymana, Mashabul Maymana. The people of the right hand, what do you know? Who are these people of Ashab al Giving them the honor that they are the people of Jannah. One group. The second group was Ashab al Mash'amati, the people of hell, the people that would get their book on their left hand. Ashab al Shimal al Ladina Yu'ta Kulun Minhum Kitabahu Ishmalihi. Those whom Allah would give them their book onto their left hand. Mashab al Mash'amati. What do you know of the people of left? Tahqiran li Sha'nihim. Allah degraded them. Dishonored them by telling them, What do you know of these people of left hand? Why they enter into hellfire. The third group is a sabiqoon, ila al khayri wa hum al anbiya. A sabiqoon ila al khayr, those who hasten into doing good, those are the anbiya, those are the prophets, those are the sabiqoon. Wa sabiqoon as sabiqoon, those are the people glorifying them, honoring them. Telling you the first one, Ashab al Maymana, Mashab al Maymana. The people of the right hand, what do you know of the people of the right hand? Honoring them. Ashab al Mash'ama, what are the people of left hand? Mashab al Mash'ama, what do you know of the people of left hand? Degrading them, throwing them into hell. Those go into Jannah. As Sabiqun, those who hasten, As Sabiqun. Was Sabiqun, As Sabiqun. Those are the people who have hastened in doing the orders of Allah subhanahu. These now people of the Jannah, and al Ashab al Maymana, these are the people that are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fi Jannah nine. People that are closer and they will be in the Jannah at nine. The heavens, the blessed Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He goes on to say the people described, Shaykh Ibrahim describes it again, he says, Yan Qasimul Azwaj Talata. They will be divided into three groups. And he describes the groups that Allah said, Ashab al the people of the right hand, um Ahlu Tawba, the people that repent. Al Muznibina Aladina Tabu, those who make sense and they repent. Allah would forgive them. They are the Ashab al Maymana. Al Mustaghfirun, the people that ask Allah for forgiveness, they are the people of Maymana, people of the right hand. So the people of right hands are you and I. Those of us who make sense and repent to Allah, those who ask Allah for forgiveness all the time can belong into the people of the right hand. Ashab al maymana Wa ashab al mash'ama are the people of the sinners. Alladina matu kafirin, those who die denying the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the people of al mash'ama Wal muqarrabun, the people that are closer to Allah, those are the sabiqun. Those are the ones that hastened, as as those who are the hastened, those are the ones that the winners, the anbiya, the prophets, 
وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ And those who follow their footstep until the day of judgment. So there are those who make sins and repent. Those are Ashab al And those who make sins and never repent. Those are the Kafirun. They are the Sabiqun, the prophets and those who step on their footstep. The awliya, as-salihin, the righteous one that never done wrong because they follow the precept of the, of the prophets. That's why Shaykh Ibrahim said, As-sabiquna humul anbiya wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. Those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. To let in min al-awwaleen, a few of the, the previous ummas, not, not the ummas of Muhammad, or the, but the ummam that, that were before us, a, a group of them, to let in min al-awwaleen, wa khalilun wa khalilun min al-akhirin. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ And a few of the Ummah to Muhammad So he is telling us that there was a group that would come to people of Jannah, would be a group of the nation that were before us, and a few of us as Ummah to Muhammad. Ibrahim said, you will see in this, قَلِيلٌ مِنْ أُمَّةِ to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يَا رَبِّ زِدْ مِي O Allah, increase me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always cared about his Ummah. Ummati, Ummati. So he will ask Allah to increase him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeat this ayah. That's why you will see the ayah repeated later on in the surah, thullatun min al-awwalin wa qalilun min al-akhirin. Increasing, the answering the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala sururin mawduna. Now you see, visualize the description of the people of Jannah now. This is now Allah is describing to you and I what would people of Jannah, what it could look like. Now remember the description that you're given into Quran about Jannah is to describe it to you the way you would want to be in enjoyment, the way of most luxurious positions, luxurious vacation, place of dwelling, enjoyment that you could have. What makes you happy is what Allah is describing to you and I. But remember, Jannah to as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describe it, the beauty of it, the niceness of it, la ainun ra'at. It is nothing that a human being has ever seen. Nothing, nobody has ever heard the description of it. No one can even imagine what it looks like because of its beauty. Allah only knows. But you and I are given the description that satisfies our needs. This is what we look for. This is what makes us happy. Allah described it to us. To make us long for it. To make us strive to get into this. Beautiful Jannah. Allah goes on to say, "Ala sururin mawgunatin, man sujatin wa qudbanin zahabin wal jawha." Wal jawahir. So if I were describing it, the beds that they are enjoying, ala sururin mawduna, they will be on beds, they will be on recliners, they will be on swing, swing sets, or however you want it. These are made of gold bars and pearls. The description of it. This, that's how beautiful this can be. Muttaki'ina alayha mutaqabilin. Ittika'u, they come into it, they lean onto it. You see, in Surah Al-Yaseen, Ibrahim described it to us earlier and saying, standing up, one gets tired of standing. Sitting down, one gets tired of sitting down. But muttaki is one that's a position that you're, a position of comfort that you're in and you never get tired of it. A position that you, when you're in it, you are so comfortable and if it's in this dunya, you get tired after a while, yes. But when you are in your most comfortable position, leaning on your couch or on your bed, and you're most comfortable, imagine staying in that status forever and never be tired of it. Mutakina alayha, mutaqabileen, facing one another, facing all of your beloved friends and all of the rewards that Allah gave you. Halani min Yatufu alayhim now comes in to tour around them, the servants. So you see now in this dunya, when you are in your most comfortable position, you like to call room service. You get into your most luxurious suite in a hotel or in a resort and you have room service. All you have to do is push a button, room service come. Here, you don't have to push a button. Yatuf alayhim, they comes in, Yatuf alayhim, it comes to go around constantly serving, constantly carrying all of your desires. These are servants that are young in age. 
They are not older because when they're older, they can be slow. When they're older, they can be ailed. And no, these are the real man, youth of their strength that would come around giving you these services and never get tired of giving you the service. And they're coming in with these jugs, these jugs and these cups of drinks that you would, that you would desire to come and give it to you so they can pour you the drinks when you need it. These abariq or these uh, jugs that has a neck where the, the fluid or the liquid would flow out of, describing the enjoyment. Now comes in the cups or the, the jugs that one drinks out of it the wine, because people, in, like you say, when you're having a good time, you have you, you have your red wine or you have your white wine. But just listen to the description of the khamr, the wine that Allah gives you on the day of judgment. Min ma'inin, it comes in with this wine. La yusadda'una anha. This wine, one would drink it and would never get a headache, a hangover. You know, they say people, when they, when they drink so much, the next morning they have a hangover, which gives them a headache. Allah is describing it, and He say, "La yusaddaun anha." They will not get a hangover. Wala yun the fool. They will not get drunk to lose their mind. La wala yaskur onuna. Aidan bi dhabi uqulihim bi khilaf al hamr al dunya sharabuha sharibuha ya udu sudaan wa yasku. Different from the wine of this dunya. When one drinks off of it, you get drunk. You lose your mind. You don't. You become a different person. You see, the funniest thing I hear some of the, my co-workers or my employees would say, I had a good time last night. <laughs> uh, way back, one of my employees had told me he had a, uh, his uh, bachelor party. He said, I was so drunk, I was puking. I was so drunk, I passed out. So I had a good time. I said, how do you have a good time when you passed out? How do you have a good time when you're puking? What is so good about it? But this Qamrul Akhira, when one is drinking, enjoying it, with however Allah describes it, the taste of it, you will not have a hangover, nor would you be drunk to lose your mind. And comes in the fruits of their choice. And the bird meats of their choice, of their desire. Whatever you have a desire for, it will come to you, and that's what you will have. For them to enjoy. Lahum listim ta'in hurun. Then Allah gives them now, rewards them with these houses that are hur. And the, the hur al ayn is a description of a woman of Jannah. And the description comes. Nisa'un shiridu sawad al ayn. That the eyes, the peoples are very dark, and the rest of the eyes is very white. The kham al ayn, the eyes are very large. Ka'amthali lu'lu in maknoon. They look like a pearl. These are the wives, these are the spouses of the believers in Jannah, the best of the look. I know there's going to be quite a few questions about what's up with the women. Jamal, Jaza, and this is a reward for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give it to them as a reward for them on the day of judgment. <laughs> Jaza'an for what? A reward of what? Mimma kanu ya'amaloon. A reward of what they have done, what they have been doing in ibadat, in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. In that place of Jannah, beside being on your recliner, beside having your best of drinks and never get drunk out of it, beside having the best of the fruits that you, your heart desire, desire, beside having your best of needs that your heart would desire, Beside, beside having your best of spouses that your heart would desire, you would not hear in that Jannah these vain talks, the word, the talks of sins, disgrace, backbiting, all of these things that are displeasing to an ear of a believer will not be heard. All they would hear is peace be upon you, peace be upon you. Angels would come and tell them, Assalamu alaikum. They would say, Assalamu alaikum between one another, and they will have, Salamun 
qawlan min rabbin rahim as Allah told us in surah yasin that they would be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would even give them salam so the people of jannah have all of these bounties all of this beauty that Allah gave them all of these rewards golden couches spouses food and drink that's what human being needs to eat to drink and to procreate Allah tells you and I I'll give you all of that and yet at the end of it I will you will not hear anything that is displeasing to you all you will hear is salaman salaman and I continue to describe wa ashabul yamin he continues again to describe ashabul yamin the people of jannah he sidrin they would be in they would be as describing them they would be in jannah they would be in the tree of sidr the tree a tree of sidr maghdud tree of his spikes which is a, a tree of um spadalia it is a fruit a fruit spadalia it's a fruit i think you i seen it in singapore yeah. a fruit a small fruit but it comes from a shrub the shrub is full of spikes now she ibrahim is going to describe why allah chose this tree the sidrin maghdud a tree of its, its spikes watalhin mandud they will have these banana trees that are supported so the bananas you know how it falls and lean these banana trees are supported from the bottom and they will stand strong one would be able to pick on the fruits whenever they desire Wazillin mamdud they have these zill uh, they have this shade that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is described on the yawm al-qiyamah Allah would bring the sun to come down to the distance of a mile on the heads of the human beings those of ashab al-shimal their brains would boil inside their heads that's why it is said yawm la zill illa zillu the day that there is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah described who will have part of the shade and those amongst them those who love one another those who seek one another teaching or reading from the book of allah and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this muzakara that we're doing this reading and learning from one another from the book of allah allah gives us on the day of judgment yawm la zilla illa zillu zillin mamdud they have this shade that would come endless shade you know shades ends when the sun goes on to this way the shade would be half of it if you have awning you can have a shade when the sun moves to the other direction either you lower the the, the awning or you lose the shade from the awning so this zil of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mamdud it will never stop nor can the sun penetrate it for those who are ashabul yamin wa ma in maskub the water comes flowing endlessly it is not a river that would dry out because of a drought but it is an endless flow of water that would come wa faqiatin kathiratin la maqtu'a this will they will also have these fruits that will constantly come non seasonal fruits as we know there is fruits that are seasonal and fruits that are not seasonal unless you live in a place where they import anything and everything like i seen in singapore and here in the us you can get a mango in the middle of the winter because it is imported from somewhere else that is exactly what you can imagine when you go in jannah allah imports everything from anywhere to where you are and the importation is not through all of these ships and what not it is be and it shall be everything that you want would come ghayra maqtu'a has non seasonal it wala mamnu'a it is not out of your price in which some of some of the fruits some people cannot afford it because it's mamnu'a unto them it is prohibited of them because they can't afford it a poor man cannot get what they want but i me i make sure it's not durian is included in, in, in i don't think durian would be in jannah uh, at least not for me okay <laughs> me my for durian would not be part of my fruits in jannah so i'm going to put that out there just so that allah knows and the angels that when i get there please don't send me any durian well i'm that was for khalid <laughs> wala mamnu'a this is not be prohibited because of the price the fruits is endless it is non seasonal it is not too expensive for anyone to afford because that is my yashtahun they get anything that they have a desire for ashabul yamin hum alladhina asnadnabu nashi bay mis describing to us who are ashabul yamin and why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use this sidr as a tree which is a uh, spadalia I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Spadalia. 
Now that tree is a shrub with thorns. He describes it as a believer. When you're picking them up, you take the thorns out of this shrub. That is the shrub has only the fruit, no, no thorn. Is a believer that made a mistake and repent. Is a believer that made a mistake and made istighfar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify him from sins as a cloth that is washed off with water, water and soap. Cleans it up from all of his sin. That is how the tree of Sidr is maghdud, is freed from its spikes, is the human being who repent to Allah would be freed from his sins. Wafurush and marfu'a, they would be resting on these elevated beds. And so Ibrahim described these elevated beds is beds that are from the heavens, from the earth to the heavens. And they would ask him, how could people ride onto these beds that are so high? They say, it would be just like a camel. When a rider wants to ride his camel, the camel would lower itself down and it rise. And the, the camel would rise up again and take him to his destination. At that moment, a believer would want to, a, a, a people of judgment who want to ride onto their beds that are so elevated would want and the bed would lower itself. An hydraulic bed would lower itself down and he rides on the bed, the bed elevates back to the desired elevation that the person wants to be. Inna <clears throat> ansha'nauna insha'a. Know that Allah is talking about now al-hurul ayn. Inna ansha'nauna insha'a ni say hurul ayn mir ghayri wilada. It is not hurul ayn that Allah would give now as a reward on the day of Jannah and not people that come, humans that come from creation, from procreation being born as a baby. No, inna and now in child. Allah on that day would just create them the way He wants to be. Tabaraka wa Taala. Fajal now when Abu Qara turns them into virgins, and they have the one they would made with their husband, they still always be their virgins. They will never be blood or pain or any of that. It will constantly be the best of pleasure that their hearts would desire, and they would be urban mutahabina. They would be loving to one another, loving to their spouses. And they would be atraban, their ages would be equal. There's not an older or a younger wife. They would be of equal of age. Li ashabi yamin. Those are the rewards of the people of the right hand. Yuzgarul hadith ya arba ashira sana daiman. They say it would be always at the age of approaching a younger age, as it is been, as it, as it, it is said in some of the description. Now, the, the question would beg itself to answer is, what about the women? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing, and some of the Mufassirin, they said, it is a man who desires to see this woman of this beauty. This is the man who wants to desire this woman of this nature, of that nature. That's what they want. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes now the reward of those men, but he describes the women of, of, of Jannah. He say, Jannatun Adinin Yadhulunaha. The women love what, what they love to have. Allah is describing them what He gives them. Yadhulunaha. You hallow na fiya min asawira min zahabin. Walu'luin walibathun fiya harim. The women love to have this gold and diamonds and whatnot. Allah describing them in Jannah, what they will have. Yadhulun al Jannah. They enter Jannah. They have all of these jewelries that they have. In another surah in, in the Quran, Yadhulun al Jannatu Adinin Yadhulunaha. And he gives them these clothing that has harir on them, which is uh, silk, clothing of silk on all of their heart's desire. Allah knows best how to describe these women. The women, some of, in some, some of Mufassir, they say, the women of this dunya will not be the women that would be serving in the Jannah. Some would be would be with their spouses. Allah would make them into those who would be with their spouses. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Aisha is his wife here and his wife in Jannah. And there are those women who will be spouses of their husbands here in the dunya and spouses of their husbands there in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Quran that man amila salihan, min zakarin aw unta, those who do righteous deeds, men and women, Allah will reward them at Yom Al-Qiyamah. So he would be just on the men and women. Having chosen to describe the reward of the man in this ayat does not mean 
it does not reward the women for anything but to be servants. Allah knows best. Thulatun min al-awwalina wa thulatun min al-akhirin wa ashabu shimali mashabu shimal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to describe that the thulatun min al-awwalin wa qalilun min al-akhir. Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it earlier that few of the group of the, the nations before, a group of the nation before and a few of the nation of Ummah Muhammad and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, Zidni, increase me, O oh Allah, made more. Allah repeated here and he said, Thulatun min al-awwalin wa khalilun wa qalilun min al-akhirin and then a few of Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he goes on to say, wa ashabu shimali, mashabu shimali. Now he's describing the people of hell, the people of left hand, those who get their book from their left hand. Wa ashabu shimali, those of the left, mashabu shimali, what do you know of these people of left? He's a moment. They will be blown with this hot wind coming from hell. A hot wind. They will not have a breeze. They will have this wind that is blowing to them from the hell fire. Wahamimin, they would have water, hot boiling water from the hellfire. With Zillin min Yahmum, the zil, the shade they will have, it will be from a dark cloud, from the dark smoke coming from hell is what they would have as a zil, as what they would have as a shade, a dark smoke coming from hell. La baridin, it is not cool. It is not a place where one finds comfort under the shade of hellfire, of, of the day of judgment. Wala kareem, it is not good. It is not hasanun manzar, it is not beautiful to see being in hell, being blown by this hot wind, being fed or quench your thirst with this hot water, being covered with this dark smoke is not a good sight to see. Innahum kanu wa qabla dhalika mutrafeen. Those are the people that in the dunya, they used to be mutrafeen. They used to enjoy life. They used to have everything that they had. The people that had the servants called home the, 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 the room service without obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without giving their due rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they were insisting in disobedience. Shay Ram goes on to say, from this smoke, from the smoke, in the sight of the smoke of hellfire, Al-Tariqa prohibits the, the smoking of cigarettes. Wadhillin min yahmum. From the word wadhillin min yahmum. Hadha dukhan. A dukhan al mudakhin. This is the smoke that comes from those who smokes. Smoking cigarette is prohibited in the Tariqa Tijaniya, according to Sheikhna Ahmad Tijani. Hiya asmaha. Ismuha al khabitha. Ismuha al khabitha. Wasifatuha kadalika khabitha. The name of it is wretched. The name of it is evil, is bad, and the description of it is bad, which is smoking, which is smoking a cigarette. haram. All of the wretched, all of the bads are prohibited. It is haram. Shaykhana Yaqul, Shaykhana Ahmad Tijani Yaqul, Atabuk haram. Tobacco is haram. Wal aslu min fi hurmati a qawlu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa kullu musakkirin haram. Everything that makes you drunk or uh, addicted to it is haram. So anything that will makes you drunk, because some of the smoke, some of the tobacco, when you smoke it, it can like pat, like cut of, of different kinds. When you smoke it or you eat it, you lose your mind. And as I said, well, you lose your mind if you smoke a lot of it. But they said, whatever, if you use a lot of it, you get drunk. A little of it is haram. And whatever, a little of, a lot of it makes you drunk. A little of it is haram. So the smoking, is prohibited. is one of those things that makes you lose your conscience. But even though there are those who are not amongst our tariqa, they differ with Shaykh Ahmad Tijani in tahrim or in prohibition of smoke. But in, a, in our tariqa, it is prohibited. No smoking cigarette is haram according to the words of. They were insistent. The people of Ashab Shimal are insistent in committing the big sins, the major sins, who were shirk, the association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were always in doubt. 
if we die and we become bones and our bones become dust, are we going to be resurrected? Our Aba'un al awwalun even if our forefathers who have died years ago turn into bones and bones into dust, are they going to be resurrected? Allah is responding. Qul inna al-awwalina wal-akhirin lamajmu'una ila miqati yawmin ma'loom. Tell them, tell them, those who were before them and those who came last, those who came before us and us and those who would come after us, all of them would be collected, will be gathered on the day of reckoning, on a known day and a known time in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is Yawm al-Qiyamah, the day of judgment. ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ أَيُّهَا الظَّالُونَ الْمُكَذِّبُونَ لَأَكِلُونَ مِنْ شَجَرٍ مِنْ ذَقُونَ All of those of you, and tell them, even though with your denials, yes, this will happen, but know that all of you that are lost, those of you that are deniers of the favors of Allah, those of you who are lost and deny, those who are deniers, know that on the day of judgment, you will eat from this tree of zakum, a tree of hellfire. And you would eat into this tree like a famali'una min halbutun. You will be eating into a hunger that you, you that will be unable to stop eating. One is dead on hungry. Imagine one walking in the middle of the desert and he's so hungry and comes to see food and he sits down and starts globbing as much as they can shove into their mouth, as much as they can fill into their belly. That's how they would look like. They will come to eat from this tree from hell and mali una min hal butun and fill out their stomach with this food and will still never have, get satisfied. Fasharibuna aliya min hamim and they would drink the sharibuna ali min hamim. They would drink from this drink from hellfire, which is a ma'un har a hot water, they would drink as a haim. A haim is a camel, a disease that affects a camel. When a camel is inflicted by this disease, it will drink until it dies, won't be able to stop drinking. These people on the day of judgment, they would be so thirsty then the, to a point that they drink this hot water from hellfire, which will get into their stomach and boil everything in and comes out from the other end and they will constantly drink and will never stop doing that. Fasharibuna alayha min hamimin fasharibuna shurbal haim, the drinking of a camel who is inflicted by the disease of sick of, of, of thirst, camel drinks until he dies. Human being drinks like as such and but never dies. Continues to be punished with drinking a hot water. Hadha nuzuluhum. This is what we've been promising them. Uh, this is what has been pro promised to them, Yom ad -Din, on the day of judgment. This is what Allah promised those who are kuffar, and this is what will happen to them on the day of judgment. And now he goes on to tell them, Nanu khalaqnakum. Nanu khalaqnakum. We have created you. We've created you from nothing. Al khalqu is not, it, creation is not fabrication, it's, it, it's not designing. It is designing from in existence. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. I have created you from nothing. Even though you do not believe it, even though you do not believe, if you were to believe that Allah created you, then you know, you can understand the one who created you from nothing can resurrect you from death. Resurrecting is easier than creating. Creating from non-existence is what Allah done for you. If you believe that he created you from non-existence, then you should believe that he can create, resurrect you from the dead. Then you could understand, is an al-qadir ala insha'i al-qadir, ala al insha'i qadirun ala al-i'ada. The one who is capable of creating is indeed capable of resurrecting, or bringing back. Afar aytum ma noon. Have you noticed that what you pour as human being, would you pour of semen into the into the vaginas of your spouses? Would you pour into the rahm, into the uteruses of your wives, of the wives of your spouses? It's nothing but sperms, semen. Once you put these sperms into the uterus, into the vagina of the woman, and it turns into the uterus, and it comes and fertilizes the egg, and the cell division happens to a point of the tissues of the organs of the human being. Have you done that? You just pour the sperms. You just put on the eggs as the women. Have you created? No. 
Have you created? Oh, we are the one that had created. We are the one that had made it happen and made death comes to you. Allah who had created the semen and turned the semen into a human being who whether you meet is the one that will make you dead. Is the one that will take life away from you. Summa you have hikum, then he will be resurrecting you on the day of judgment. That's why Allah said in Surah Tabaraka, Surah Al Mulk, when Shaykh Ibrahim is describing it, he said, Tabaraka alladhi khalaq al mawt wal hayat. He created death and he created life. So there is a four kinds of, uh, of existence death exists first, then life comes in, then death comes again, then life comes again. The death that is half a cell, half a cell of a sperm. It's not a complete cell. It's not a living thing. When does half a cell meet with the cell, with the half a cell of a woman, which as an egg, it becomes a living cell. That cell goes into cell division into, into until Allah puts the ruh into it, it becomes alive. Because it has no, no ruh at that time. When it becomes alive, puts a ruh in it, it becomes alive. So this was non-living and it becomes live, living. Then it dies. When the ruh is taken away from it, then it be resurrected when the ruh is blown back into it. That's why I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the sperm and turn it into life and take that life, that life take, put it into death and it will be resurrected on the day of judgment. We are not incapable of doing such. The ajizin in doing that. We are not incapable of replacing you as human beings. Allah is telling us, if you do not believe, Allah will replace you and put bring in another nation. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala Qadr ala an yubadila amthalul mujudin al an yuhlikuhum wa yati bi akhirina tilka adatu. Allah is capable of taking you all and bringing in you. Think about life. What happened to the people of Qawm Nuh, Qawm Lut, Qawm Ad, Qawm Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, all of these nations that were before us, where are they? Hundreds of years, thousands of years, they've come and gone. We will be here and we will go. And another one would come. And we will be created again. From what you do not know. He can take us, take you and bring you back into a different kind that you do not know. He can turn you into monkeys, pigs, dogs, anything that he chooses. He can do that by his own will. If you were to know, if you were to know that you came from sperms, then you would know that you can come back into life the way that you came into non existence. You can come back into life by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to remember, he goes there to say, a human being should not be a boaster, arrogant. A human being should not be an arrogant. Why? Because you first you come in as a money, as a semen. That whatever a semen is on you, you wash it. No one walks around with semen because you despise it. You take it away. You clean it. It's not something nice. It is a ghazir. It is dirt. You remove it from you. And you and I came from this. And after a while, you become... A corpse. And no one wants to be around a corpse. You describe it. You take it away. You, you do not bury a corpse in your house. You take a corpse in out of the city. You dig a hole. You put it in the hole. You close the hole. And it's worse here in America. They take the coffin, a corpse, and they put it into, into a coffin. And they take the coffin and put it into a cement block. And they close the cement block. And they dig six feet underground. And they bury it. You who started from the semen that you would always want to clean off, clean away from, and end up into a corpse that everybody wants to get rid of. If you think of yourself to be this and that, you should not be proud in the period that is in between. You should not be proud in that period that is in between. And him himself will always have an excuse in that short period that he's living. As I've heard one said, 
when you go to a graveyard, you find the date of birth and the date of death and a dash in between. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتِ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ Mawt and hayat, life and death, or death and life. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا To test of you who has the best of deeds in that dash. وَقُلُوا مَا تَسْمُونَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَا لِيُّ وَلَكُمْ يَا فَوْزَ الْمُسْتَغْفِرِينَ I've said what I've said. Anything righteous is from Allah. Whatever is wrong is from my shortcomings. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me and forgive each and every one of you. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Al-Fatih lima ugliqa wal khatimi lima sabak. Nasir al-Hatta bil-Hatt. Wal-Hadi ila suratika al-Mustaqim. Wa ala alihi haqqa qadrihi. Wa miqdari al-Azim. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum, Imam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah. Uh, thank you so much, Imam, uh, for the class. Uh, inshallah, we hope that uh, it was very beneficial for everyone. Um, I think at this point in time, uh, for questions on uh, uh, those those of you who still have questions, you guys can submit to the number eight seven seven six seven seven zero six. Imam, the first question. Uh, we can just jump into the questions, yeah, Imam. Yes, Bismillah. Mm -hmm. Bismillah. Uh, Imam, for the first question is on the name of Waqiyah itself. Uh, could you, uh, the person asking, could you elaborate on this name that was given and what was the significance of it and how, what it, what it actually means uh, for us when we, ever we read it? How can we contemplate and understand the meaning deeper based on the name of it? Yeah. See, Waqa means a happening, something that happens, you know, something that exists. Because they were, they were the denials of, of, uh, of, of al-waqia, that this will happen. When the happening happens, and Allah has used the word, is a waqatin waqia, when the event happens or when the happening happens, with you denying that will happen, it will happen. Don't doubt that it will happen. When it happens in that day, there was no denial of it. So it gave it a name of al-waqia. When it happens, there is no denials of it will happen. So you and I need to be walking around thinking about the happenings of that day. The day is going to happen. So it is to remind you and I that you will be judged. Everything that you do will be judged on that day, on the day of al waqiyah on the day of al qiyamah So al waqiyah is a day of al qiyamah another name of it. It is the, the, the because now it describes how it will happen. If I rujit al adraja al jibal how it will happen that waqa? The event. What are the events that happens on that day? The earth would be shaken. The mountains would be pulverized. People would be budding out of their graves. That is the event. So walk around imagining that event. Walk around think, thinking about the day. Think about when you are told that, yes, there's going to be a, a, a natural disaster, an earthquake. There's going to be a, a tornado. Here in America, there's a lot of places that have tornadoes. There are people that are called uh, storm chasers. What they do, they go running after the storm and they try to film it and show the people what it looks like. Now, make yourself the storm chaser of the day of judgment. You're thinking about on that day, I'm going to be budding out of my grave. On that day, the earth would be shaken. On that day, the mountains would be pulverized. On that day, I will be standing in the, under the sun that is hot enough to boil my brain. And I would long to have the shade of Allah to protect me. On that day, I will either be given my book on the right or on the left. On that day, I'll have to face all that I have done in this dunya. Everything that I've done in secret will be brought in front, broadcasted, national television, everybody to see. On that day, my parents would be there for the things that I used to hide. On that day, my spouse, husband or wife would be there to see me have cheated unto them. On that day, the people. So you can go on and go on. Before you do anything, think about is our waqa'atil waqa'a. When the event happened, and that event is everything would be shown. Everything would be broadcasted in front of everybody. Worst of worst is I will face Allah with what I have done. Wallahu a'ala. May Allah, may Allah help us on that day, Imam. Thank you so much. Uh, Imam, um, 
this question is a bit different. It's more on um, uh, reaping the benefits of the surah itself. It says, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I mentioned that surah wakil helps to increase the risk. Uh, mm-hmm. is, is there a number of times that needs to be recited daily? Um, and also, mu- must they put a specific intention when they're reciting surah wakil, just like how they recite surah yasin? How does it work mm-hmm. for surah wakil? Yeah. Well, it is said that one of the Sahabas, when was was my, during the, the was leaving his children, and they asked him, "What have you left to your children?" He said, "I left them with Surah Al-Waqi'ah." So mm-hmm. Surah Al-Waqi'ah is to be read for rizq, and whatever you want in in the Quran, you pray for it. You add, make the intention. In the Al-Aman, yet all these are with the intentions. So you have the intent to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to give you the rizq out of Surah Al-Waqi'ah. And one of the things that I've known is, is to read it between Maghrib and Isha. And you read it one time, read it twice, read it three times, if you're capable of. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears your dua. Read it once between Maghrib and Isha. Allah could grant, grant you what you desire. And it is known to be amongst the halakat of Sufism that Surah al is to be read for increase of, of the wealth. MashaAllah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Imam. Imam, with regards to uh, reading Surah Waqiyah, you know, a lot of people say that you know, we read it in, in order to increase wealth and risk. Maybe could you elaborate on this concept of risk? Because sometimes they read it doesn't necessarily mean increase in monetary wealth, you know. Could you elaborate mm-hmm. on that? Yeah. You see, that, that's a very good question. It goes, risk, risk, al ghina, risk of wealth. It is not always monetary thing. That's why it is said, al ghina ghina nafs. Richness is the richness of the heart. When the heart is content, then you're rich. As Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one of his hadith, "Irda bima khasama ulaulak takunu agnan nas." Accept, be content with what Allah gave you. You will be the richest of men. There are those whom Allah wants to give them a valley of gold. They would ask for more. You give them a second valley of gold. They would ask for more. A third valley of gold. They would ask for the third. They will never be satisfied. That person, if he reads Raqqa 10 times a day after every salah, Allah would give him what he wants. He will still want to read more Raqqa so he can get more. So it is not just the, the monetary risk that you will get, but to be content with the risk that Allah gave you. Yes, if you are unable to pay your rent, you would want enough money to pay your rent. If you're unable to just feed your family. You would want something to feed your family with. It is good to feed your family. Rasulullah mm-hmm. said in another mm-hmm. hadith, if one wakes up with good health and has yeah. has what he can uh, satisfy his needs on that day as if he was giving the whole world and what it has to offer. Why? Because you don't know if you're going to live tomorrow. Why gather this wealth if you're going to die tomorrow? So be content with what Allah gave you. So when you're asking for this risk, is to be able to satisfy what your needs are. That's why one of the dua of Shaykh Ibrahim used to be, Allah fill our pockets with money and our hearts with Allah. Allah. Fill our pockets with money and our hearts Allah. with Allah, Allah. So that we can spend on our needs, but we still be content with what Allah gave us. So yes, you can look it for the monetary fund, but the most important to have the real nafs risk that would be content with what Allah gave you. Wallahu a'lam. Allah knows best. MashaAllah. Um, Allah knows best. Thank you so much, Imam. Imam, the next question. You mentioned earlier that all our past deeds will be broadcast on the Day of Judgment even when we have repented. Will it still be short if, let's say, we've repented over this? Yeah. It, you got to remember that when, 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 when Allah forgives you, there are those who when Allah forgives you, He forgives you without hisab. Without judging them. On the day of judgment, they will not come in and be told, okay, you've done this good, you've done this bad. This is your good deed, this is your bad deed. Put them on the scale and which one wins and then you go. No, Allah forgives them without hisab, without judging them, without anything, without weighing their deeds. When Allah forgives you, He gives you the sutra. The sutra meaning you will not broadcast your deeds into the, in public. You become an ashabul yameen, as Allah described it into that that uh, that tree, so, uh, the tree that is a shrub that has lots of spikes and has fruits. But in the day of judgment, the spikes would be removed, the thorns would be removed out of the tree, and the fruits would be accessible. A believer, 
who repent in this dunya after making a sin with the conditions of repentance. A believer who asks for forgiveness with istighfar on the day of judgment, he will be free from his sins as the tree was freed from his each one, so it will Mashallah. not be broadcasted. Mashallah. Thank you. Thank you, Imam. Imam, the next question uh, uh, is asking, may I ask, in Jannah, will we be reunited with our loved ones? The person says, I heard from someone that we will not be able to recognize them or know them. Mm. Yeah. And it, we are told, actually, that is not what I've heard. What I've heard is those, even if you want to see your loved ones, when your mind thinks of them, you see them. You don't have to go, oh, I, I miss Abu, Abu Sufyan. Well, I got to go book a ticket and then go from, from Michigan to, you know, what state and then from there to, to Japan and from there I get to Singapore. No, I wish to see Abu Sufyan. I see Abu Sufyan right now. If we're mm -hmm. able to see each other, you see, technology gives us the science of knowing what a lie is capable of. If we're able to, we're capable to see each other just because, you know, how many miles away from you and I, and I can see you and speak to you, yeah. what Allah is capable to do on the day of judgment? Why can't you recognize them? Allah is rewarding you the everything that you want, everything that what you want. I love to see my mother. I'd love to see my father. I'd love to see my brother. I'd love to see my brothers in Singapore. My, I'd love to see my... So why don't I, Allah deprive me of that? And he, yet he promised me that he will give me everything that my heart desires. And that is part of it. Yes, why won't I recognize them? Because those who were older turned younger. Yes, <laughs> a joke that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we oh, know, sorry. he's known to be a humorous. He was, he, a, an older woman came to look to him and ask him, will I get to Jannah? He said, no. And then the woman started to cry. He said, because old people don't come into in Jannah, there will be no old people. <laughs> Everybody yeah. will be younger. So when That's we're right. younger, we still recognize one another. Allah knows best. Allah knows best. MashaAllah. Thank you, Imam. Imam, uh, there's a line on uh, wasabiqun, as asabiqun, and then also those, those who are the first to enter it and those who receive the Quran on the right hand. How do we be amongst this, this group of people, Imam? And Shaykh Ibrahim said it in, 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 the, in the tafsir at the end of that part. We say, Sabiqun and Sabiqun, who are Anbiya, who are the Anbiya, who are the Anbiya, who are the Anbiya, the Anbiya, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. How you follow the footsteps? You follow the footsteps of, of the Prophet. Shaykh Ibrahim said in one of his poems that he follows the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wherever Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam puts a foot, he puts a foot. If it continues, the journey would be long because we'll never turn away. Follow him with everything that he does. The only way you could do it, Allah told us in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَلِيَوْمَ الْآخَرِ In the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have the best role model for those who want to be amongst the Sabiqun. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَلِيَوْمَ الْآخَرِ Those who want Allah, those who want the Day of Judgment, those who want to be amongst the Sabiqun, Follow the footstep of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi As he told us in the hadith, "Taraktu fi ma inta masatun bi lanta dillo baadi kitab Allah wasunnati." I've left with you two that if you follow it, you will never go lost. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah. Wallahu a'lam. Thank you, Imam. Inshallah, this will be the last question. Imam uh, is related to the questions, but it's a bit different in the sense that it's asking about uh, your advice on uh, on repentance. What are the signs that our sins have been forgiven and accepted by Allah? And if we fall into relapse of sinning on the same mistakes and regretted and repented again, does this mean that uh, it is not forgiven or accepted? So yeah, they're asking on acceptance of repentance. Yeah. We have to look, number one, one have to look into sincerity. So here is a, a regimen that you and I can practice. If my sins are using drugs, those who are psychologists, those who are uh, drug rehab specialists know of what is called a trigger. That if I go on to an area that I used to use drugs, well, as soon as I get there, my mind is triggered into doing that. So I'm gonna go back into probably using the drug. 
when I go to, when an alcoholic goes on past a bar, the first thing when he thinks of a bar is to get in and drink. Avoid the passes that takes you to a bar. When you are the one who's, who's weak with his... Okay, it looks like my battery is weak. No worries, Imam. We'll wait for you. Yeah, yeah, just a second. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When one is weak, when one is weak with, uh, with 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 women, whenever you're with women, you always want to commit a sin. Avoid that. Get married. When one, so these things that are triggers towards you falling into the sins, know what to do to avoid it. The the the, the rehab specialist know how to treat a, 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 an addict from doing that those sins. The same thing. The addiction of sin. It, the, 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 the ulama and the shuyuk know how to take you of the sin. I've had some people that have issues of being free from using drugs and they remove themselves into a different location where there is none of the triggers. Meaning if you have friends that are sinners that commit sin in whatever fashion they do, change those friends into new friends. Al-mar'u ala dini khalili fal yanjuri al-mar'u man yukhalil Everyone is in the religion of his friends. So choose the friends, the people that you befriend. So that will help you in keeping yourself from falling back into the sin. When it comes to whether the sin is, the repentance is accepted, does not matter how many times you repent and fall back. As long as you were sincere the first time, as long as you were sincere the second time, as long as you were sincere the third time. Abu Dhar in al-Hadith, said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what if a person commits a sin and repents? He said, Allah would forgive him. He said, he goes back and repent again. He said, Allah would do the same thing. He said, Allah would forgive him. He said, he does it again. And he said it four times, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anti Abu Dhar, fa'unnahu aznaba war alima anna lahu rabbun yakhbiru dhunuba fastaghfara fa'naframa unnahu awkam haqai. No matter, even though I know you, Abu Zar, don't like it because you think this is a joke. The man sins and repents and he sins and repents. Even though you don't like it, Allah still repents, forgives him because he knows that he has a Lord that forgives sins and he sins and return to him and repent, he will forgive him. The question is, were you sincere when you are repenting? You don't go to the bar and drink all week long until Friday comes in, you go to the masjid and you say, I repent and you make sure you, you cry and you're thinking about where to get drunk tomorrow, Saturday. What bar are you going to go? That's in your head. You don't go to clubbing, clubbing, clubbing until the end of the week, you go to the masjid and you make salat and you're wondering where is the next club? Who's going to play in what club next week? You're Googling it up already to find out where's the band playing. That is the intent is not sincere. When the intention is sincere, Allah would forgive you. When Allah forgive you, it turns your heart away from committing the sin. Amongst the signs of your, your repentance being accepted is sincerity, is you lack the desire of committing the same sin. Mm. If your desire is still there in committing the same sin, repent more. Check your sincerity. You may not have the sincerity need at the right place. Allah knows best and may Allah help us in Ameen. being sincere in our repentance. I mean, yeah. uh, Imam, I, I think this question also, uh, I think I think is, we, we should ask this last question. So hopefully one last question, yeah, Imam. Uh, this yeah. one, inshallah, is the last one. Um, you know, there's a, uh, there's a saying that, uh, you know, on the day of judgment, uh, none will be safe except those with a pure or sincere heart. And you did mention about, about that, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do we be among these people, Imam? Yeah. Yeah. You see, Allah man atalla bi salim. Yom la yanfa'u manun wala banun illa man atalla bi qalbin salim. The day that nothing benefits no one except those who come to Allah with a pure heart. Now, the, the ulama of Sufi, uh, the uh, scholars of Sufism said, human being has a heart. The heart is the only thing that Allah looks out of you. That's why there is a hadith al-Qudsi that nothing can be fit me except the heart of a believer that can mm -hmm. be fit me. So this heart can be dirty, can be dirty, 
his heart can be filthy, his heart can be stained, as Allah described it in the Quran. Their hearts would be stained, would be stained. Because whenever you make a sin, the heart is put a stain on it. Whenever you make another one, a stain is put on the heart. Until to get to a point to the point that the heart is completely stained, you are unable to see your Lord. Worship your Lord as a level of ihsan, as if you are seeing him. If you're not seeing him, know that he sees you. You cannot reach that level if your heart is stained. That's why I say, one way of explaining it, is that on that moment, they are sealed from Allah. They will not be seeing him. On the day of judgment, they will be also sealed. They will not be able to see Allah. So this heart has to be cleaned from all of these sins. That is why the ulama, they said, human heart can be stained with these two passions, two ways of staining them. Like you say, your white cloth can be stained by blood and has a stain, organic stains, or it has the chemical stain, or non-organic stains. There are clean, there are products that you use to clean organic stains. There are products that you use to clean non-organic stains. Mm -hmm. Human heart can be stained by two things. One of these stains, we could call it the organic stains, is a rafla, forget, forgetfulness heatlessness, not remembering Allah. The product that you use to clean the heart from heatlessness is a zikr, remembrance of Allah. The other part, the other stain that is a non-organic stain that can stain the human heart is a dhunub, committing sins. And the only way you can remove this stain, the product to clean the sins is al istighfar, a tawbah, repentance. So one has to repent to clean the heart. One has to make, to make zikr to clean the heart. That's why Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, to go in the life. Repent to Allah, for I ask Allah, I repent to Allah 70 times in a day. If Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to do that, what about us? So that is one way that I know of to cleanse the heart so that on the day of judgment, we can be amongst those who will come to Allah with a qalbun salim. Wallahu a'ala. Mashallah, I mean, and may Allah grant us that. I mean, thank you so much, yeah, Imam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's very interesting you made the distinction between ghafla and and, and sinning. Uh, or, yeah, repentance on that. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, Imam, well, we've come to the end. Uh, always a joy to have you. Uh, a lot of beneficial insights. Uh, yeah. Could you help us to end with a closing dua, Imam? Subhanakum bihamdik Allahumma nasaf wa yakawna sta'ajaka wa natu wa yakawna a'udhu billahi min shuruhi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdi Allah fa huwa al-muhdad wa man yudhil falan tajid lahu wa liya al-mursila Allahumma yahdina ila suratil al-mustaqim wa suratil ladhina namta alayhim ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wa labda alayhim amin Ya Rabbi bizati wa sifati kullana fi sa'iri al-halati thabbit qulubana ala al-imani wal tahdina li amali al-ihsani unzur ilayna wa ansura al-nadina adhi hukukana wa adhi dayna وهب لنا ذرية مباركة تكون لله بلا بشارة يذي كل من إلينا أحسن وجازي عنا جزاء الأحسن بالمصطفى شفيع يوم المعشر خير الولاء من قد حبيب الكنفري عليه صلى ربنا وسلم الوفاض بخيرنا وعمما وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر حق بالحق والهادي إلى صلاتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار عظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يشفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين 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 يا رب العالمين thank you so much إمام for that and she even that closing دعاء is very beautiful I think we could even have a talk on that closing دعاء itself yes all encompassing indeed I think I think you said it during one of the sacred power of love yes yes it's one of the دعاءs of 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 شيء بعيد من كنز المسون that it is recommended for the murids to read so you guys up there Look it up in the Council Masoon and, and read it. Be, make it amongst your du'a. MashaAllah. Yeah. Allah bless you, Imam. Inshallah, uh, I mean, I mean. another lesson, inshallah. Thank you. Is Allah bless you. Wa alaikum as-salamu wa rahmatullah. Take care, yeah. Take care yeah. Imam. Take care, Abu. Alhamdulillah. All right, guys. We've come to the end of yet another uh, very insightful class on the Tafsir of Surah Waqiyah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's always uh, a joy to have Imam Mandaw around uh, to teach us on... Uh, the Tafsir of Shebraim Nias, especially. And uh, yeah, but, but yeah, keep on joining us for the next few lessons because inshallah, even if you miss this uh, live, you can actually do a playback uh, for the video just now. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, inshallah, we'll be having a lot more classes. The next one is actually on the 17th of June, uh, which is uh, with Sheh Muhammad Al Ninoi, Al Husseini. Uh, the topic is When there is Allah, why is there evil, poverty, and suffering? 
when there is Allah, why is there evil, poverty, and suffering? So, a very interesting topic with Shema Ma'ani Noi. That's on the 17th of June, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. And um, yeah, just check out our social media. Uh, and also, yeah, a quick uh, announcement. Saul Ilahi, we are looking for people to participate in the Korban. We're having another Korban uh, or Akika uh, in Senegal this year. And yeah, you can do a portion of a cow, goat, uh, sheep, or whole cow. So that's going to be uh, happening this year, inshallah. Um, and uh, yeah, if you are interested, there is actually a WhatsApp that you can uh, uh, you can send your message to. It's 9670-4471. 9670-4471. Uh, there's also a bit.ly, a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash Africa Korban. A-F-R-I-C. I think our admin can probably put the link in the comment section. Yeah, so you guys can just put the link in the comment section. Uh, bit.ly slash Africa Corban, uh, A-F-R-I-C-A-Q-U-R-B-A-N, all in a sm smaller case, lower case. And with that, we've come to the end of uh, yet another beautiful class. We really look forward uh, to having you guys join us again. Please pray for us, our volunteers and our directors, and of course, our scholars. May Allah accept, may Allah forgive us, and till next time, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.